Today, God told me to tell you to write this word down, responsible, responsible. You know, I've realized that the relationships that I had, as good as those relationships were and are, a lot of it had to do with not just who I was in relationship with, but how, I was, how responsible I was in those relationships. Come on, I want to teach today. Amen. Amen. I want to teach. You know, I, you know, used to look at my relationship with my mom and I used to be like, you know, I guess I thought because she was my mom that certain things were just supposed to happen automatically. All right. And then when I look back at some of the tension that we had, it was probably the point of my life and our relationship that I was the most irresponsible. Amen. Praise God. I mean, but I used to just look at the relationship like, what's going on in the relationship? Like, it's not what I thought it was going to be between me and my mom. But when I look back, it was like, bro, you was irresponsible. Hey Amen. When I look at my marriage and, you know, when my marriage wasn't as blissful as I thought it should be, I look back, I was like, ah, you was being irresponsible. And I look at my life and I look at the relationships that I have and I look at the health of those relationships and it's not just because they're healthy by osmosis. They're healthy because... I'm probably more responsible at 52 than I've ever been in my life. Hallelujah. I'm talking to somebody today. And I realized, hallelujah, that we all stood and said, you've been so good to me. But the question is, have we been good to him? That's the real question. That's, that's the real question. And God is saying today that the word that I want for you is responsible. Amen. Praise God. And it's so funny, you know, um, I'm at a different stage in my relationship you know, with my son, but I remember there was a time when, you know, Jay would be like, man, it seemed like this and it seemed like that. And I'm like, bro, at the end of the day, bro, you can't compare our relationship to other people's relationships. You have to compare your response and their response. Just being real, people do it all the time. Oh, you treat this person, you treat, you're missing the part though. You're missing the, they're more responsible than you are. So we quick to compare. Oh, this person got that, and this person is this, and you treat this person, ah, it's, uh, uh, it's not just that you treat, they're more responsible. And so there, there's a, those of us in the body of Christ, and we like, God has been good to us, and we are run and shout and jump, and you're telling the truth, and you should be excited. But God asked me to ask you today, are you being as responsible in this relationship as I'm being? Because I blessed you and some of the time you're like, oh, well, I'm not blessed like I, you're like, you're not being responsible. So, so the word God gave me today was responsible. Hey, Amen. you have been good to us, God. But God is saying, are y'all going to be as good to me as I've been to you? And if you're not, okay, I get it. I'm God. But can you try? You know, you hear people all the time, you can't be God given. It don't mean don't try though. You know what I'm saying? I can't beat him given. I can't beat him. So we ain't even going to try to be, you know what I'm saying? It's not possible. Okay, at least try it all. Create a, there should be a generosity war between you and God. Hey Amen. Praise God. I told y'all, when I go out to the restaurant, I'm not tripping on her attitude and how she acted. I'm just giving her $100, period. Why? Because the generosity, I'm just saying, God, you've been so good to me. I want to be good to her. Like, I don't know if anybody else is going to tip her today, but she's not going to go home without gas. She's going to have gas money today. I don't care how she treat me. It doesn't matter. I'm not doing what I'm doing to her because of who she is. I'm doing what I'm doing to her because of what he's done for me. And I just want to go out and just, I just want to bless everybody because he just blessed me. I just want to bless everybody. It don't have nothing to do with you. I, you had a terrible attitude. The food was cold, all of it. But I just want you to know he's been so good to me that I'm not going to allow you not being good to me to change me being good to him. And so God told me to tell you today, like, yo, if you want, if you want more people, Look up the word responsible and start doing that and watch what start happening in some of your relationships. Hallelujah. Praise God. And so I don't know what y'all got from last week, but I, you know, the beautiful thing about preaching is that you're actually hearing God while you preach it. Like he downloading stuff to you to say while you said it, but I'm hearing him. Like I'm listening too. I'm getting rebuked. And, and you know what he hit me with last week? God, we're going to stick on this financial piece. And let me just say for those of you who are online, the way you responded is incredible. And for those of you online, I do want to apologize. You know, you, you, uh, you responded economically in a way I've never seen before. And what it goes to show me is, I, well, I didn't respond the way 
You wanted me to respond before because you never taught me. Amen. So I just want to thank those of you who are online. Praise God. You, 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 you showed up last week economically and this week you showed up and it had everything to do with teaching and praise God for uh, all of the men and women of God who had something to do with the week of prayer and praise God for Jamie being responsible and saying, hey, you know, that was five o'clock in the morning. A lot of people probably wasn't up. So we're just going to redo it this week. And we put it up this week and people responded. I think we probably got almost 8,000 views between Instagram and Facebook and people were pouring in the church with blessings. Amen. Amen. So I just want to make sure before we get going, amen, I want to make sure before you get going, I'm going to, t- I'm going to tell you what God told me last week week. He whipped my butt all week long. Amen. But I want to make sure, listen to me, God gives me a word. And sometimes because that word is so simple, you overlooking it. And I'm trying to tell you that the first couple minutes of every sermon is probably the most important because we're setting the foundation. And the word that the Lord told me to give you is responsible. And God told me to tell you, don't, don't you look for health and don't you look for wealth. And don't you look for no part of your life to be great if you're not going to be responsible. Amen. And I just want, like, I'm just being real. There are those of us sometimes, you know what I'm saying, we get into a position where we pray for something so bad. And then once we get it, we're not responsible no more. Amen. I'm just saying, husbands, you have a responsibility to your wife. Wives, you have a responsibility to your husband. Kids, you got a responsibility to your parents. Parents, you got a responsibility. Like, it don't work just because y'all in the same. Diddy said something to me. I pray she was teasing. She may not have been. I don't always know. Amen. But we were uh, in, I think we were in New York, Toby's uh, premiere for Transformers. And Diddy was saying, like, yo, we married on paper. Right? And I was like, that's a deep construct. You know what I'm saying? She was like, we married on paper. I'm like, that's deep. Like, I know exactly what you mean. It means that people can be in a marriage, but it's just the paper. And so what happens when it's just on paper? It just means what happened was you're not being responsible. You're not doing your part. Why are you married on paper? You're not doing your part, right? So when I got home, I'm just being real, Mo. Like, I be taking stuff serious, bro. So I get to the crib. I'm like, let's talk. And she's like, "Uh, you know, it's Lansing, and we not really, you know, it ain't blissful from what we, the conversation we have I'm just like, man, God, this Lansing, though. It ain't a lot to do. He said, no, be responsible. Have a conversation, figure out what she want. And this was a week of me going, all right, bro, I promise you, we ain't get home to 8.30. I, bro, one, one day, Mo, she was just like, I, yep, I'm good. I don't want to go home. I was like, all right, bet. We're going to go shopping. When it comes back. Mo, I was just like, how you feeling? She's like, I really don't want to go shopping. I'm like, well, you just want me to drive back and forth up Saginaw. I'm being real, bro. I'm like, you just want to ride back and forth. You don't want to go to the crib. Ain't nowhere to shop. We can just put the windows down, put music on. We can just drive back and forth. I'm like, God, I want a blissful marriage. He like, then be responsible. And so I'm going to tell y'all what God told me last week. All the stuff that he said last week, the thing that hit me the most was, and don't write this down if this don't apply to you. God said to me that one of the things that I have against you, son, is you lazy. You lazy. Hey, man, a lot of people look at me and you be like, man, come on, not E.T., like E.T. grind. And I say, you lazy, right? And so we're talking about finances, and I want to talk about finances today because God told me to tell you that the people of God, we are lazy, and that's why we're not where we need to be financially. You know what's funny? I, I promise y'all, and look, nothing that I say, I don't say this with anger. Please forgive my passion. My wife been saying this for 30-some years. I just be trying to explain it to her. Like, I promise you I'm not upset. I just, God has just given me, like, when you see the videos, he just gave me passion. I just be passionate about this stuff. That's it. You know what's crazy when you deal with humans? People will call me for their money, but people won't call me about being responsible for the money that they have. It's the craziest thing. When you're dealing with humans, like, they want their money, but they're not as responsible about doing what they said they was going to do for their money. Like, I don't be getting no calls on, hey, El Pastor, hey, D- E.T., are you, did I do what I was supposed to do for the money? Like, like the money you gave me, like, are you, how you feel about, like, did I live up to the, <laughs> like, you said you was going to pay me, like, people always call me to tell me what I was going to pay, like, you promised me you was going to pay me, but nobody calls me and says, I promise I'm going to fulfill my part of the, God said, y'all lazy. Y'all want the money, but you lazy when it comes to being responsible for the. I said, son, you lazy. Like you speak for a living and you kill it, but it's a whole bunch of other ways that you could be economically beneficial so that you could bless my kingdom. But you lazy. You'd prefer to get on a plane and speak for an hour and come back than you would to train and coach. You lazy. There's a bunch of opportunities here 
but you're not getting them because you're lazy. And I'm like, man, God, that is the truth. Like, I ain't fight with him. I was like, yeah, you're right. I am, I am lazy. I'm lazy. I, all my money, I got a financial dude. I don't even have a key. This is embarrassing. I don't even have some of the codes to look at some of the money that I got. I don't even have a code. I, I don't even, like, I don't even know the code. Like, my man got my money, and he telling me every month if I may. I'd be missing most months. I don't even be there for the month. I'm like, my man, like, yo, we need to meet. You know what I'm saying? My man more serious about my money than I am. Lazy. I prefer you to, I'm just being real. Some of it, we lazy. And so I'm going to walk you through the word. We're going to spend some time on this one. Um, we're going to spend a few weeks when I'm here really walking through this, fi- un- unlocking financial abundance. If that's something you are interested in, amen, praise God. If you could, can I get a huge favor? I forgot to grab some water. If I can get some, I'm sorry, I just got so excited about the preaching, the word, I forgot. Amen. Pra- praise God. Unlocking financial abundance. Can you do me a huge favor? I don't have no us over here. Um, can you do me a huge favor? Can you write that down for me real quick? What's the number that you think God is? Six figures, seven figures, eight figures. What's the figures? Praise God. Thank you, my brother. What's the figures? Amen. Let's take the one. Amen. What's the figures, y'all? What's the figure? Write it down real quick for me. We're not playing today. This we're not playing church. Write it down. Amen. Now, as we are going throughout the message, I want you to just write down where you're not as responsible as you could be. Call the people that you love the most and let them know they need to be responsible. A lot of people are not here today. Let the word be known, pastor, the, God, the word that God brought forth, responsible. And as your level of responsibility grows, so does your level of success grow. Amen. You, I'm just being real. We like, oh, my marriage, ain't, you ain't being responsible. You didn't got to a point where you like, yo, I'm good on that. I don't want to, I don't got, I don't want to do that. I ain't got to do that. I'm lazy. I'm just praying that. I'm going to be real, y'all. You know what I was doing? I was, ho- I was, I was relying on Hulu to be, uh, make sure my marriage was blissful. <laughs> I'm relying on Hulu. I'm like, Hulu, what y'all got on the night that we can watch? We ain't not even really talking or doing nothing, but we in the same pre- Hulu. I'm relying on Netflix. Just being real. I'm just, well, we're going to watch something on Netflix. God was like, Didi was like, we can't watch that. I was like, we can't, well, we can't do nothing. Our marriage is doomed. We can't watch this. We can't play that. We can't do this. And God is like, yes, you can. It's stuff you can do. You just want to be lazy. You just prefer to come to the crib, hit the remote, and let the remote just take care of your marriage. <laughs> Just being real, we lazy. We just lazy. There's so much more. And so write down the number that you want. What, like, God, here's what I think you told me. Six figure, seven figure, eight figure, nine figure, ten figure, whatever it is. Write it down. Now, Jeremiah 29, 11. I have to do this every week because for I know the plans that I have for you. This is how I knew I was lazy. I knew that the plans that God has for me, that I'm nowhere near that. And you know how I know when I'm doing business in the world, Everybody that I connect with, they always be like, bro, you ain't, you just getting started. <laughs> I'm being real. Like, I've done a whole lot. People be like, bro, you just getting started, bro. Wait till you get, like, technology. Like, you ain't got no technology. You ain't got no PR. You ain't got no marketer. Bro, it's just you and the Holy Ghost. Bro, you don't got this. You don't got that. Wait till you get a strategy. Wait till you do this. Wait till you do that. I'm just like, yep, God, you're right. I just be relying just on the Holy Ghost. I'm just being real, I'm lazy. Even my wife would be like, yep, I can tell you ain't really studying. There'd be times where I'm just like, yo, I'm just going to go in there, Holy Ghost, that joker. <laughs> I'd be praying. I just know the Holy Ghost is going to come. She's like, he is. But if you study, he, he might even come even grow. Like, right, I just be lazy. And there are those of you, you're looking at your life and you're not happy with certain parts of your life and you've gotten to a stage in your life where you waiting for Netflix and Hulu or whatever your Netflix or Hulu is, your job, you waiting for them to give you a check, you waiting for them to give you a raise, you waiting for your husband to make you happy, you waiting for your wife to make you happy, you waiting for your kids to do something. It's like God says, stop being lazy. For I know the plans that I have for you, you ain't nowhere close to them. At some point, it should bother you. <laughs> At some point, it should bother you enough to do something about it instead of always relying on somebody else to make you something. I promise you, I'm tired of hearing kids. I'm bored. Bored? (laughs) What does that mean? That means that you're not doing something for you. You bored. (laughs) I ain't bored. (laughs) You bored. (laughs) Now you waiting for me to entertain you because you bored. Now I got to switch up my whole hookup to make you happy. And that's why we are. And that's why many of our relationships are messed up. That's why the church is messed up. School's messed up. Everybody waiting on somebody else to do something for. I was watching Instagram. My man, I was impressed. 
My man had to look, uh, pastor, it, was like, it must have been like a silver tray that he brought to his wife, you know, to breakfast in bed, pastor. She was in bed, he brought, it was dope. Like, it was one of the ones that you see on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Like, it was an expensive one. He had the towel around him, wipe in the bed. My man came in, the music in the background. My man came and he gave her the little whole hookup, breakfast in bed. She was geek. She took the covers off, grabbed it, opened that joke up so she could start eating. And it was raw eggs, raw bacon, raw pancake mix. And he was like, when you getting up, the kids ready, to, they, they hungry. We, we hungry. I said, what in the devil? My man said, we hungry. I thought he was giving her breakfast in bed, pastor. <laughs> he was giving her breakfast and what I need from you. I'm saying that's where we are as a people. We're just going to let God just keep blessing us and we're just going to sit back and just take the blessings. We're going to let other people bless. Let me tell y'all something. I'm telling y'all this back in the day. This is back in the day before, you know what I'm saying? Now, the Lord has always been blessing. Don't get it twisted. I don't mean it like that, but it was, we were in a financial transition. Hey, praise God. And I just remember the Arrington's just used to come to church just randomly. You remember that pastor? They used to just come to church randomly and just like write you a check for $1,000, right? Listen to me very closely. When they would do that, I promise you there was nothing in my spirit that was like, I can't wait till they give me another one. <laughs> I'm just being real. What was in my spirit was, someday you're going to have to do this. Someday you're going to have to be on the set. You're going to have to, re- you're gonna have to like, this is a human that God is blessed to do this. And they would just be coming in randomly. That t- different people just blessing them. And I didn't go. Uh, I didn't, like, was looking like, is this our money again? <laughs> I started praying, God, I want to be able to do for others there are those of you who are blessed and you still just chilling on the blessings. You ain't try, you ain't trying to play to be the pray, pray to be the person to bless. You just think I'm lazy. You just waiting for the blessing. You got I, I'm just saying, and you wondering what's going on with your relationship. You always taking, and at some point, people just get tired of it. People get tired, like of just like it's one thing when somebody bless you, but then when you start. Waiting and uh, expecting the blessing now. Nah, people are like, oh, it's too much now. Praise God. Amen. And so God says, for I know the plans that I have for you. And, and God's plans for us should be our plans for us. They're plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in the future. So if our life don't look like this, somebody's doing something wrong. And we need to go to God and figure out what's wrong. Hey, man, you need to be actively in- involved. I'm bored. Okay, what you going to do then? <laughs> what are you going to do if you're bored? Find something to do, but don't, don't make that my response. Don't make that God's response. Does that make sense? So, so no, let's go to the next slide. I'm telling y'all, here's, 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 here's a step that I want to give you that I, I think that can help. When I read Jeremiah 29, 11, this is my version of it. This is my interpretation of it. I believe everything that the Lord said and says about me and mine. So when I hear Jeremiah 29, 11, I really believe it. I really believe that God has a purpose for me, a plan for me. I really believe that God wants me to prosper. I really believe that God don't want to harm me. I really believe that God, I should have hope. I really believe, I I believe everything the Lord said and says about me and mine. And I'm going to run to see what the end is going to be. Every day I get up, I'm running to chase Jeremiah 29, 11. What are you chasing when you wake up? Boredom? What are you chasing when you wake up? Attitude? What are you chasing when you wake up? What are you chasing? Things ain't where I want them to be. Wait, I'm not chasing that. I'm chasing Jeremiah 29, 11. I woke up this week and called my kids like, yo, we got an opportunity. I see something. I'm looking at the world and what everybody is going after and they missing this group. Hey, let's get together as a family and let's, I'm going after Jeremiah 29, 11. I don't have time to talk about, you know, my son called me. How you doing? I'm doing great. He said, yeah, I said, bro, uh, we not, uh, we ain't, uh, matter of fact, it was a pastor I was talking to and he was like, well, Eric, I, I said, bro, do me a huge favor. He was like, no, I want to explain to you. I said, bro, do me a huge favor. That's your past. I'm not. I'm not Jacques Cousteau. I'm not pastor. I'm not putting on no scuba diving outfit and going to the depths of the sea looking for your sins. I said, please don't. No, I want to explain. You don't have to explain nothing to me. <laughs> you don't got to talk to me about if I called you. You ain't got to explain nothing to me. I said, and here's why. It ain't even personal. I don't want to put on no scuba diving suit and go to find your stuff because I might find mine while I'm digging for yours. I'm good on that. <laughs> I don't want to see none of my past. We stay out the water. <laughs> 
We ain't going nowhere near the water. Hey, man, if God want to bring something up, let God. But I ain't going to nobody nothing because I don't want to see none of my stuff. Come on, somebody. Hey, Amen. So God has a financial plan for us, and we got to get off the world's plan and get on God's plan. Hallelujah. Watch this. I want to show y'all this. This is deep, y'all. This is deep. The Bible says in the book of Acts, chapter 4, Joseph. Now, this ain't the Joseph of the Old Testament. This is the New Testament Joseph. A Levite from Cyprus, whom the apostles called Barnabas. I like this. You could call, start calling me Joseph, which means the son of encouragement. Amen. I like that as a nickname. I like to believe that's one of my gifts, the son of encouragement. He sold a field he owned and brought the money and put it at the apostles' feet. My, 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 my. I don't, Carl, thank you so much for the visual. Carl, put the visual up. I, I want y'all to get it. I want y'all to get it. That oftentimes we read the Bible and we're so spiritual when we read the Bible that we miss the very practical stuff that's in there for us now. The, 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 before there was the nine to five millionaire, Joseph made real estate real. <laughs> I know y'all know about Jamal, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and, and the nine to five millionaire, but according to Acts chapter four, Joseph had made, uh, 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 he had made real estate real way before, amen. And how did he bless the church pastor? He had so much land that he sold a piece of his land and brought it to the church. Hallelujah, we being lazy. Hallelujah, we being lazy. Amen, God specifically blessed a group of people in the word, hallelujah, and they own, he owned the field. He wasn't borrowing. He wasn't renting. He owned fields and he took one of them, hallelujah, and he brought it to the church. Praise God. I'm getting ready to teach now. I'm getting ready to teach. Somebody say with me, Lord, help me to stop being lazy. Come on, Lord, help me to stop being lazy. The apostles were doing God's work. And so God blessed the people outside of the church with the type of entrepreneurship so that they could bring the money to the church. Oh, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. People say to me all the time, Pastor, you're doing a whole bunch of stuff. I have to. It ain't enough. I promise you. Pastor wouldn't be getting a check if we just relied on the people to make sure that he got a check. It, it wouldn't go down like that. So we got to do entrepreneurship like this didn't build itself. This wasn't free. Like nobody, there was not one, help me Jamie because I could be wrong. There was not one contractor in all the state of Michigan that said, don't even worry about it. We're just going to come in here and build a joker for free. There was nobody that sold carpet that was like, we heard about the ministry. We love what y'all doing. We been about to do carpet for free. I heard about what y'all was doing. We about to just send y'all chairs for free. The very chair you sitting on cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Nothing in this room was free. And so we being lazy. God said that there was a young man who was in real estate and God blessed him in real estate. And he had so much property, pastor, that he took a portion of it and he brought it to the church so that the people of God who served the church could eat. Hallelujah. We're being lazy. God said we got to stop being lazy. All right, so let's go. I got a quad for y'all that I want y'all to, we're going to go over this for the next few weeks. I'm going to do one at a time. So the very first one is develop a high income skill. In the name of Jesus, write that down. Please. I want you to take this all to God. We have, as I look at my, my, my grandma had 14 children. As I look at the, 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 the 14 of them, the only thing that separated my mom from her siblings economically was that my mom never had a job. For the most part, my mom had a career. I want to make sure y'all caught that. That was the key difference. My mom didn't have jobs. My mom didn't have five, six jobs. My mom made a decision at a very young age to connect with Ford Motor Company. Nobody knew Ford, GM, or Chrysler was going to do well or not. Who knows? But my mom connected and she didn't have a job, which means she got a check from here and there. My mom got a career, total difference. Now listen to me very closely. I'm no better than nobody in my family. We're not better than nobody in my family. I'm just telling y'all out of 14, my mom got a career. And as a result of my mom getting a career, my life was different than my cousin's life. 
I'm not saying my mom, I'm not saying I was better than my cousin. I'm not better than my cousin. I had a different life. Why? Because my mom had a career, which means what? There was money coming in on a regular basis. There's somebody in this room, they called me pastor. I have an opportunity. Do you think I should take it? I said, absolutely, you should take it. Why? Because they're going to be giving you a check every month. Right now, as an entrepreneur, you're not getting a check every month. You're going to get a stable income. Do you know what a stable income can do for you? Get that. Go take that. I want to make sure I'm making sense. We have to be fiscally responsible as the people of God so that we can do God's work. Does that make sense? So the first thing we need to do is not just get a job. Let's go back. I want them to see the whole choir. I'm going to walk through it. The first thing you need to do is develop a high income skill. Whatever you're doing, it should bring in a whole bunch of money at one time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number two, you should create a management system, meaning that God can give you something, but if you don't manage it properly, I don't know how many of y'all uh, had an opportunity to hear um, the UOU Summit. Anybody in the room get a chance to go online and hear that? Mignon said that the same, she, she said, in the cupcake business, huh? Somebody talk back to me. She in the cupcake business. How much money did she say she's made in the cupcake business? $10 million. And what did she start with? $5. She says she's still eating off that first $5 that she invested in her. She says she got that $5, got some cupcakes that gave her $600 passing. She says she re-upped with the $600 and got some more cake mix, and she took all the extra money and put it away. Somebody said, why'd you put it away? You ain't had no money. She said, I already didn't have no money, so I wasn't about to eat the money that I could use to invest. I was already broke, so why spend some of the 600 on make me more broke? She said, no, I put that money up, and I kept buying more cupcakes. She's number one in the state of Georgia. She's number one in the state of Tennessee. She took $5 and turned it into $10 million. That's management. Some of you in the room, you didn't blew every $5 you never owned. <laughs> every $5 you got, you done ate it. You're wearing it on some shoe. <laughs> it's clothes. Every five dollars, God, God has already given. Listen to me. I am a firm believer that if you had a job for over 10, 20 years, you, uh, you, you at some point, you're going to see a million dollars. But why can't you tell? Because number two, many of us do not create a management system. We get it, but we don't manage it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Number three, uh, this is how you go to another level. When you start generating wealth for others. Hallelujah. Before I get out of this earth, I promise you, God has blessed us to make hundreds and we'll make thousands of people uh, uh, six-figure nares. And we made a few seven-figure nares. And it's a couple guys that's in the eight figures that, that came through our teachings. I'm going to just be real with you. If all you focus on is you, you'll never make a whole bunch of money. At some point, you got to teach others. And here's the last one. You leave us a legacy. That whatever it is you do, you create a positive ripple effect that extends beyond you and your life. All right, so let's go, Carl. We ready. All right, I'm going to get y'all out of here. We're just going to teach today. So number one, I just want to show you. Commit time and effort to learning and growing your skill. Number one, here's a challenge that I see with most of us. You hear that in order to become a millionaire, you need seven streams of income. And so what people do is they rush to go get multiple streams of income and you give it all five or four that you have 50% of your effort. So I help somebody, I want to teach today if that's okay. I want to teach you today. I don't know who this Joseph dude was, but whoever he was, he took real estate serious. There are those of us who are in real estate. There are those of us who are in speaking. There are those of us who are in software. There are those of us who coach. There are those of us who consult. But, 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 but you're doing it at 50% or 60% or 70%. And the real money is in the skill. So I remember when I first started speaking, they gave me $150. I'm up to $200,000 now. It's a skill. It's a skill set. It's like you got to spend time on it. And can I be honest with you guys? I don't know if you know this, but as a speaker, the most money you can make as a speaker is about $5,000 to speak. So how you get to 200? It's a, a, a lot of other stuff. <laughs> it's degrees can get you more. It's where you spoken. I, look, I just did a gig last year. The coach became number one. Um, he became coach of the year, his first year coach. I said, do me a huge favor. This is skill. I said, do me a huge favor. 
I need you to do a letter, not on letterhead, this 2023. I need you to make that joker look sweet. Basketball, championships y'all won, and I need a letter you stating what I did for you. Why? Because you make more money when other people see that you help somebody else succeed. I'm just saying, a lot of us do some dope stuff in this room, but you're doing it like on a, on a J, JV level. You ain't on varsity. You're not the captain. You know what I'm saying? Like, you do what you do, but you don't take it serious. And so, number one, find, find, develop an income skill. Commit time and effort to learning and growing in your skill. Like, keep, like, go deeper before you go wider. And many of us, you're just going wide. You're not going deep. Right, let's go to the next one. I want to show y'all something. I want to show you something biblically. Watch this. Wow. Okay, I'm sorry. Can we? Uh, okay, before we go there, I forgot. I told Carl to add this, Thessalonians 3 and 11. Here's some of y'all problem. For we hear that some among you walk in idleness, not busy at work, but busy bodies. I'm just being real. Some of y'all can't be successful because you're in other people's business. Look, I'm not mad at you. I'm just telling you, you wasting time on somebody else's business. That's not about to do nothing for your business. Somebody asked me, how's so-and-so? Charmel said to me today on our leadership call, Pastor, uh, uh, what are you going to do about the people that, uh, that fell off? I said, Charmel, I didn't even know nobody fell off. <laughs> she said, but you the pastor. I said, when I get on, I get on for me. I'll never be looking to see who on. I ain't in nobody else's business because it don't got nothing to do with my business. If they fell off, she said, well, you know why they fell off? I don't know. I fell on. I've been on all, I've been on every week. I fell on. I don't know about, I don't know about nobody else and they fell off. It ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm just being real. I'm being, I'm not, I'm in the church. I'm not lying. I don't know who on who off. I don't even remember who I invited on there. I don't even remember. <laughs> She's like, you don't remember that? Nope. You sound like you do though. So you might want to call them and figure out why they left. That's not my business. I just get on every week. I'm just saying, some of you, you'd be much better off if you weren't worried about, I love my siblings to life. I don't know what really going on. I just know that I put myself in a position that if they need me, I got their back. That's all I know. I don't know nothing else. My mom just bought a crib here. Somebody's like, how's the bed? How many square feet? I don't know. I just know that I'm in a position if something happens, I just know she sold her crib. I ain't had nothing to do with me. We ain't talk about it. <laughs> I just know she was living next door. I ain't had nothing to do with me. I had no plans for her living next door. That was not a part of my plans. I'm just being real. I didn't buy that house for my mom. I bought it because I wanted to use it as a uh, Airbnb. I didn't buy it for her. But guess what? God knew she needed it in God. That's his business. It's his house. It ain't mine. I'm just, I'm, I'm renting it out. <laughs> and he said, you're going to rent it out to your mom and you ain't even going to charge her. Okay, that's what we're going to do then. And she's going to be in there as long as she needs to be in there. Okay, that's, that's what you want. I'm in a position that I happen to be in a church where there's a realtor who when my mom said she wanted to find a house, I had a realtor that could help her. Listen to me very closely. Get out of folks' business and put yourself in a position that if they need you, you could do something for them and not just be in their business. I'm just saying, some of you, the reason why you're not successful, you're in people's business. Listen to me. I know that this may seem weird to you, but it's in the Bible. Being in people's business must be something because it's in the Bible. Pastor, and this ain't the only scripture. I just chose this one because it was the smallest one. But there's some other ones in there about being in people's business. Guys, get out of people's business. That hour or two you spend gossiping, use that to, it, for your skill set. <laughs> Take that out, that time you worried about why they doing this, why they doing that. I don't know. Go get a book and go study. Get a book, read a book. Go take a course. This extra time you have. Man, I told this dude the other day, he was like, man, E, I'm strapped for time, E. Bro, I hear what you're saying about, you know, skill set, E, but I'm strapped for time. I said, you strapped for time? You the same dude that was on Instagram saying who you picked to go to the NBA Finals. Last time I checked, you watched the game on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. You caught got, you got all three games. You caught the pre-boy, and then you watched the whole finals. I said, do me a favor. The time that you watched the finals, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8.30 to 11, make that your time now. You proved that you could watch the Heat, and you proved you could watch the Denver Nuggets. Now take that same time and start studying for yourself during that time. 
You ain't got no time problem. You got a, you in, uh, you in Joker's business. <laughs> you in Jamal Murray business. Huh? You in they business. Oh, who you think gonna win? You in they business. You don't win when they win. Get out they business. Get in your business. Get you a schedule. When is, when is your final schedule? When is your Western Conference, Eastern Conference schedule? Where your schedule? You got time to watch grown men go up and down the court, but you don't have time for yourself? That, you, that's a sickness. You told me you don't have time. I can show you your TV schedule. You got plenty of time. I can show you your talking on the phone time and your texting time and, and other people's business time. Just flip all that time you're giving to somebody else and use it for yourself. I just want y'all to know it's in the Bible, Thessalonians. That's in the Word, right, Jamie? Is that I didn't make that up. It's just in the script. It's just in the Word right here. It's just true for, for we here. <laughs> Okay, I want to stay right here. This is Paul. Paul is so busy that Paul don't know it to be a fact. He said, for we here. I ain't been in, I, ain't, I don't know because I'm busy doing God's work. But I hear that some of you are walking around idle. You want to know why you broke? You lazy. You're not busy working. You busy in people's business. But busybody, they got, even in the Old Testament, they got be, in the Bible, they got busybodies, plural. All right, let's go to the next one. Commit yourself. I just want to show y'all the word because I know some of y'all be like, you're making this stuff up. I'm not making it up. Watch this, y'all, and I'm going to let y'all get out of here. I'm just going to run through these real quick. This is going to blow your mind. This is the Bible. Now, Abraham was very rich in livestock. Pick the thing you're going to do. Give it back to God and see God go to work. Abraham just wasn't rich because he was rich. He was rich in livestock. Like the dude next door. I don't know if you ever paid attention to my man next door with the nursing uh, uh, adult living facility over here. He got livestock in the back. One of them is called, okay, forgive me. It's a, I think it's a yak or something. What's it called? Some kind of animal he got. It's a super expensive animal. And they shed this and then he sells it. Right across from my man, I, we talk. He, it, it's, I, it's from, if you see it, they're in the back. But what they do is you shave them, and it's very expensive. And he was like, "Oh yeah, I just got about ten of them on there, and it's thousands of dollars worth." Just uh, he got livestock, y'all. In 2023, go outside of the city and cows. Rick Ross got cows, y'all. Rick Ross, he ain't dumb. He got cows. He got land. You get tax breaks with that. Watch this, Genesis 13. He said, rich, let's go over all of them. Number one, he's rich in livestock. Number two, he was rich in, and then number three, he was rich in, we should have some silver or some gold, y'all. We should have gold. I'm just saying, if you study in Wall Street trapping all these people, the one thing they say is the best thing to have is gold. We just come into church. We just waiting for somebody to give us, pay us. We just lazy. We got all these gifts and talents. We got a guy, but we waiting on some company to take care of us. And then when they don't, we got an attitude. And then we take their money and we don't always do what we said we was going to do when we get their money. I'm just being real. We want the money, but we're not doing what we said we was going to do. And then you're wondering why God ain't blessing you. He tried. With the last three jobs you had, he tried to bless you. <laughs> he tried. You lost all three of them. <laughs> You didn't do none of the investment. They had investment portfolio. You didn't put none of your money in investment. You spent it all. Let's go to the next one in case you think this one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Don't, don't move. I'm sorry, Carl. This part is deep. This part is deep. He had so much livestock that he and his nephew Lot had to go different parts of the country to live. They had so much. They didn't know whose was who. You got to go live over there. I'm going to go live over here. We got too much stuff. We can't even keep up with it no more. This is how God wants us to live, but we being lazy. You know what you got to do to have this much livestock? How many people you have had to hire? You would be richer if you use your gifts to hire. You're so focused on you eating that you forgot. That is not God's way. God ain't never just focused on himself. For God so loved the world that he... Oh, we remember this happened. Come on, y'all. Let's, let's do all of them. <laughs> For God so loved the world that he... Go give one of your cars away. Huh? Go give some of your stuff away and see what happens. Start with the stuff you're not even using that you one day going to get to be able to fit back into. <laughs> 
one of these days I'm better. That was your college. <laughs> Let that go. You're not going back to college. Let that go. Let somebody else be blessed with that. You're not even driving both cars. Give it away. Give it away. Let's go. Watch this, y'all. Watch this. Watch this. I'm not making this up. Watch the second one. That was Abraham. This is David. David was a fierce warrior and gained wealth through spoils of war. You think Russia and Ukraine just fighting to be fighting. They fighting for something. They're not fighting us. We're not next door. <laughs> they fight next door. They want to take that land. They want to take the people. So David was a war. Spoils of war, tributes from other nations, and as a ruler, a very prosperous king. Watch what he says. I've taken great pains to provide for the temple of the Lord hundreds of thousands of talents of gold and million talents of silver, quantities of bronze and iron too great, too great to be weighed and wood and stone. They say that it was, it was estimated to be over $200 billion today. I don't know who you are in this room, but we need our Abrahams today. We need our Davids today. 200, okay, so if you've never been to, give me the name of it, Jamie, Jam, Jam, I want to say it right. Abu Dhabi, how do you say it? Abu Dhabi, you remember the temple? Well, let me tell you something. Christians, keep your mouth shut. Keep your mouth shut, Christian. These little churches around here, shut up. It's, it's, it. Abu Dhabi, go and see the temple that the Muslims have made for Allah. Gold, diamonds. You walk in that joker, you can't even, you're not even allowed, <laughs> Pastor. There's certain spots you're not even allowed to go. They, we walked in that joker. I'm not playing. They got about seven men with some type of broom and they sweeping every second. You walk over there. They... I love Christians. We Christians when we when it's uh, convenient. <laughs> we pray when it's convenient. I'm telling y'all, I've been to Philly with the, uh, uh, the Sunni Muslims. I'm doing business with my man. That the horn blow. Ooh, it's time to pray. My man, go ahead and keep that. I'm like, bro, let's do it. He's like, I got to go pray. Not, I'm going to hold on it. He's like, no, prayer is more important. Go and take that, and I'll see you the next time. Yeah. This, the, these people, they, they, we got to honor God and our money too. We are, we Christians and we living from check to check. That's not honoring God. And it's not that we don't have because we can't have. We been, I told you, I took it to L. We're being lazy. Let's go to the next one. I'm going to let y'all get out of here. I promise. It's the top of the hour. Watch this. Solomon, King Solomon was richer and wiser than any other king in the world. These are the men and women of God. They all consulted him, right? He was a consultant. They came to him and he was a consultant. He was wise. He got a check for consulting. Those of you in this room, you know God. You know the word. You've been through life. You should be consulting. You shouldn't be on the phone gossiping. Uh, kids killing themselves and look at the world today. Consult. Make it better. Come up with programs and plans. Come up with strategies for the schools. You sitting here talking like people in the world. Look at the children, what is going on there. They just don't seem to know themselves. Come up with us. Don't you understand that God is allowing you to be around the problem so you can come up with a solution? And then when you come up with the solution, they're going to pay you for the solution. Hey man, I'm so glad. Yesterday I had an opportunity to go by Marcel and uh, they, him and his wife, they have a um, daycare that they're opening up and I walked through and I saw the, this property and they're like, they, we got this one and this one, you know, when we finish with this one and get money, then we're going to do this one. I'm like, wow, y'all got one and then y'all got one for when y'all finish with this one. Y'all got a plan for that one. And as we walked through, she had all of the pictures up of what it was going to look like and, you know, and she, she has a, um, a grant that they're going to get and it was, I was just like, praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. This is what we're supposed to be doing. So we don't have to send our kids to places and people that we don't trust. I walked out of there. I was like, come on, Holy Ghost. Bless them. Overflow this joker. Blow this joker out. Let they take this whole plaza. 
and then give them their own land. And then it's in a neighborhood where our people are. Each of them brought Solomon gifts. Listen to me. We're going to get out of here, but listen to me very closely. You should be so good at what you do that they bring you gifts. You should be walking in the restaurants and they don't make you stand in line. You should be such a blessing to your community that when you sit down to eat, they tell you, don't worry about it. Somebody over at that table paid for you to eat. That's how blessed you should be in this community. In the Lansing community, East Lansing, Granite, wherever, Hope, wherever you live, you should be do it. You should be blessing this the school systems here, or blessing the sports programs here, or blessing whatever you blessing, that when you walk into the store, they don't want you to spend no money. The dealership should be, pastor, the dealership should be giving you cars, pastor. The dealership should be giving you expeditions, pastor. We should be blessed. This is Solomon. Articles of silver and gold and robes and weapons and spices and horses and mules. This continue. Jamie, this is the word of God. We're not preaching this kind of stuff. This is the word of God. This first Kings 10. Go look for it for yourself. King Solomon reigned for 40 years. Each year he received 25 tons of gold. One ton of gold is worth $64.3 million. Therefore, 25 tons times 40 years of his reign amounts to $64.3 billion total net worth and estimate over $2.1 trillion, y'all. Let's go to the last, I think, this, let's just run through these. King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. How much land you got to have to do this? And so the king and all the people dedicated to the temple of God. I'm going to say this to y'all, and I'm not going to say it in my lifetime, but it, I could be dead. Get your money and let's build a temple that represents God. So I'm just being real. Like, stop coming and just taking from God. Build God something. You and your family say, we're going to give God, we're going to put $100,000 away, and we want to walk into a place that's marble, not this cheap carpet. This was the cheapest stuff. Jamie, am I right? This is the cheapest stuff we could get at the time. It's cheap. It's cheaper. What quality can it was one to five quality? What quality is this? Two. We walk, we in God's house and we're walking on two. I'm just being real. The chairs. How long ago we bought those chairs? Who bought those? You must have bought those. Okay, you bought those. I knew she must have bought them. She said they did. Amen. I, listen to me very closely, though. I'm not, I'm not playing. My wife is not going to spend more money on our house than she's going to spend at the church. We're doing a pop-up shop. My wife, like, don't bring no old stuff in here. We're not giving these kids nothing old. They're getting brand new stuff. I don't, I don't care if it was worn twice. Don't bring it in here. We're giving away new stuff. I'm just saying, y'all, we should be chandelier. When I kid, took the kids to Dubai, I took them to the lot. I took them to the best place I could take. Somebody said, uh, E, they got a Holiday Inn. I said, a Holiday Inn in Dubai? We got one of those in Lansing. Why would I put them, why would I take them to Dubai to stay in a two-star hotel? Give them the best of the best. I told y'all, little man said he wanted an A5 steak that cost 250 I said, give it to him. Why? Because they kids in there eating a two. Don't make him feel like he too and fears other folks eating five. Let him eat like everybody else eating. I dare you to, I dare you. If you read these scriptures, what you keep hearing? That they bless the temple of God. We ought to have a, we ought to have an edifice that's so beautiful that people can't pass it, that they come just to see what this place is. Let me teach Matthew, the New Testament. After this, Jesus went out and saw a tax collector. Pick your skill and go in it deeply. He picked the tax collector. Jamie, pastor, why did I miss this, pastor? Pastor, you know how much money I've given the government because I didn't have a, even Jesus knew to put a tax person on his team. We 
we so spiritual, we miss this stuff. He, had, he knew that they was going to be bringing in money. He knew they were going, so he put on his side a tax collector. He needed somebody that could show him how not to pay all these taxes. By the name of Levi sitting at his tax booth. Follow me, Jesus said to him. I just, <laughs> I just want y'all to see. He didn't go, hey, Jesus, can I work for you? He's like, oh, they're going to tax collector. He's skilled. Huh? He's just not looking for people who wounded. He's just not looking for people who hurt. He's just not looking for people who bruised to come into the church and live off of him. He's looking for some bruised people to come and get skilled, to get trained, to get developed. So we don't just sit here and take. He's looking for people to get skilled and developed so we can do something for his kingdom. He told him, follow me. And he got up and left. He left everything and followed him. Then Levi held a great banquet for Jesus at his house. And a large crowd of tax collectors. Huh? You ought to be so skilled that in your skill set, you should be surrounded by other people who are skilled. Who told you to be by yourself? Who told you to isolate yourself? All right, let me get the last one just so they can see Sister Girl, because I want y'all to think, you know what I'm saying? I want y'all to see Sister Girl. One of those listening was a woman from the city of, forgive me, I don't know how to say that. Somebody tell me how to say that. All right, that's true. All right, you said it. Name Lydia, a dealer of purple clothes. <laughs> I looked up what purple clothes was. Yeah, it's like Prada. It's like Birkin. It's high level clothing. She invited Paul, Silas, and Timothy to stay at her house. She had a spacious home that could accommodate many guests and servants to meet their needs. Sister girl, amen, used her wealth. She was high end. Her stuff would have been sold at Beverly, on Beverly Hills Avenue. She was next level. Their income. All right, so last slide. Develop a high income skill. Last slide. Commit time and effort to learning and growing in your skill set. How much money would they pay you? Oh, it's like water. You can get this for 50 cent, but if you're at the airport, it might cost you $3.50, $5. You had a game, it could cost you $6. It's all about skill. Dedicate two distraction free hours each day to learn and master a specific craft. Write that down. Pastor, I don't have two hours. Yes, you do. If you start watching TV, you do. If you get out of other folks' business, you do. You got time. <laughs> if you get off the internet, hey man, just do me a huge favor when you get a chance. Just look at how much time you on your phone. And if it say four hours, it means you got four hours. Yeah, get off your phone. Hey Amen. I'm just telling you, I just recently, God was like, what are you even doing on your phone? You're not even doing nothing. And they got it now where if you ain't doing nothing, they're going to put stuff on there for you to do that you ain't even asked for. So they're like, oh, you just on your phone, huh? Okay, good. We got some salute. We got something for you. <laughs> do this or think about this or look up this person's life. Next one. So select replicable YouTube channels, not just any channels, tutorials or online courses that are aligned with your chosen skill. And finally, immerse yourself in the content, master the basics, and diligently build up upon that foundation. I leave you with this. Can y'all show the video? I just want y'all to see how real this is. Can y'all show the video? Then I'm out. For those of you who are watching, watch this video. Watch this video. I too listen to YouTube channels. Trap, Wall Street trap is somebody from the financial standpoint that I listen to. I want y'all to watch this real quick. Look, look, what? If this the don't blow your mind. Has a big group. The Are we able to show Jesus it? Christ of Latter day Saints has a hundred billion dollar portfolio. Uh, no, I'm not mad. Let me first say that. The church has a big Let's, Okay, we're going to go back. I just want y'all to see it. Did y'all hear that number? Did y'all hear that number? We got work to do. 
Somebody not playing. And whoever started it, he did, and somebody else took over. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, come on, start from the top. Let's, we're going to get this and pray and let y'all go. Christ of Latter-day Saints has a $100 billion portfolio, y'all. Now, I'm not mad. Let me first say that. But here's what really caught me off guard. They got 47 billion stocks. Let's check out their portfolio. Now, this ain't all of it. This was their top picks, though. They had uh, $669 million in Meta, $682 million in Johnson & Johnson. They had $710 million in MasterCard, $720 million in, in NVIDIA, $808 million in ExxonMobil, $1.4 billion in Google A and Google C, which is Alphabet, $1.4 billion, $968 million in Amazon, $2.6 billion in Apple, and $2.2 billion in Microsoft. The church is getting money. Look, that's you they always that's say, I'm actually I just want y'all to see that. And how much like is that? Somebody touch the money. Come on, how much did they say? A hundred billion. Somebody not playing. Some some leader knew. All the, all the members got Apple phones. We might as well make an investment. Everybody in here got Amazon. Everybody Amazon. Well, some of us big time. We got Amazon Prime. Some church said we just gonna put back our money and where everybody spend our money. They got a hundred and bi a hundred billion dollars. So I'm on YouTube and I'm paying attention. And I said, God, I don't, have, I don't know how much time I have left on this earth. But we about to make some, I mean, praise God, Linton, if Linton is watching, Linton gave us an idea about two, three weeks ago to take some of our money and invest it and we made that move. That was a simple move, but it was an IRA worth something. It's like, they like the bank, like y'all been sitting out there, you ain't doing no way, it's just in the bank. So we just, so I'm serious about this, y'all. Carl, as I pray, give me the text, the commandment that God says about our finances and what our finances should do for the next generation. What's, the, what's, the, uh, what's that text, Carl? You can just say it out loud. Oh, you're going to put it up. Okay. That's Carl's favorite. Yeah, he said to me all the time. I'm like, wow, that's deep, Carl. Nobody ever really tells us that we have a responsibility financially. People make us feel like Finances don't have nothing to do with God or nothing to do with the church or nothing to do with it, but it does. And there is a scripture that specifically says to us that when we walk away from this earth in some form or fashion, we should be able to take what God has given us and it should be a blessing to our children and it should be a blessing to our children's children and it should be a... Huh? Say that again. Good. Yeah, here it is right here, y'all. Good people leave an inheritance to their grandchildren, but the sinner's wealth is passed to the godly. We, the Bible is telling us we should be in a position not only to take what we have and bless the next generation, but we should be able to take that money that's the, A poor person's farm may produce much food, but injustice sweeps it all away. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their, their children. Father, we come now in the name of Jesus Christ. We have a, we, honestly, Lord, I take, I take full responsibility as a pastor. I'm, I have been lazy economically. I just, you know, work in Michigan State and they, they wait for them to give me my check. They told me to put some money into, they gonna match my stuff. So I just put in what they matched. I didn't, look, I didn't investigate on my own. I didn't see where I was putting money and put it in. I, just lazy gave me a couple of streams and I'm just sitting back relaxing. The Bible, the Bible is clear. Abraham, these guys were in the trillions, the billions. And so we have gifts and we have opportunities. And we want to be more responsible for, for you have given us all gifts. Help us now to take those gifts serious, spend time with those gifts. Go to class for those gifts, online courses for free. Get around other people, go on YouTube and learn. Not only so that we can be a blessing to ourselves, but we can be a blessing to your kingdom. Lord, I vow that before I leave this earth, Lord, I will economically put myself and my family in a position that even after we're gone, Lord, that there could be a, an edifice built for you, Lord, that represents you properly that we would take this plot of land and put something on this land that will make people marvel. 
because you are worthy to be praised, Lord. You've been responsible. Now it's time for us to return the level of responsibility back to you. You've done your part. Our cup runneth over. And now may we dedicate our lives to your work and to your mission. Not just economically, but our time. There are those of us in this room, Lord, we ought to be ashamed of ourselves. We have time for everything but the church and the church work. We have time to do everything, Lord, but do what you call us to do. And you, you put the breath in our nostrils so we can do all this other stuff. And we only have time to come here to word and leave. Help us, Father. You've been good to us. You've been responsible. May we return it, Lord. There's some school that needs us. There's some prison that needs us, Lord. There's some young person, there's some widow that needs us, Lord. There's some child of a, they need us. You said, take care of the fatherless. You didn't tell us not to have a good time. You didn't. You didn't tell us not to enjoy uh, 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 this world. You didn't. But you said, give me your first fruits. I've been good to you. I've been good to you. Give me your first fruits financially. Give me your time. I've been good to you. May your family be dedicated to the church. I've been good to you. I didn't ask for your whole life. But I asked for a portion. I said, will a man rob God? Yet yeah, you have robbed me. Yeah, you robbed me. So we repent today. This is more than economics. This is our gifts. This is our time. This is our interest. This is our effort. Be quiet is kept, Lord. There are some things that we've lost by putting everything else before you. The Bible is clear. Let him that stole steal no more. We've stolen from you, Father. This day forward, we want to return back to you what belongs to you. We love you, we praise you, we worship you, we honor you, we adore you. This is not about APOC. This has nothing to do with APOC. We can go to another church. This has everything to do with you. You've been good to us and you've been kind to us and you've blessed our families, Lord. You've been better to us, Lord, than we've been to ourselves. So may we make a worthy sacrifice. For these things we ask as we ask for forgiveness of sin and we thank you for your mercy and your grace. And may we try to return unto you that which belongs to you. Bless this pop-up shop, Lord. I'm not just interested in blessing the babies. I want this thing to be so phenomenal that people ask, who in the time of recession has the type of money to do this? Who is their God? Who are these happy people? Who are these people that are praying for us? Who are these people that are giving away stuff? Who, who is their God? How, how in the world at a time like this could they look out for other people's kids in a way like they they kid? Who, who, who is their God? Where, where are they? And what must I do to join a crew like this? I thank you in advance, Lord, for the souls that will be saved that day and the partnerships that will be produced and the love that will spread throughout the city. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for joining us this week. For those who've expressed an interest in supporting our ministry, please use our cash app, dollar sign, a place of change, APOC, for your donations and tithes. If you prefer more traditional options, please visit our website at www.apocministry.org, where you can make your donation via PayPal, credit card, or certified check or money order. We look forward to seeing all of you for our midweek service Wednesday evenings at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with Pastor T.J. Tyus. On behalf of our pastors and their families and your APOC family, we wish you all a very blessed week.